All right, we know that protein synthesis is complex, but do we know that it's a lot more than just consuming carbs and consuming protein in order to get a muscle to be stable or grow? Okay, in this video, I wanna break down omega-3s. I wanna give you the science and some of the truly legit studies that are showing that omega-3s are playing a huge role in our ability to build muscle and our ability to actually establish protein synthesis. But before I go any further, I wanna make sure that you turn on notifications for my videos so you know whenever I go live or you know whenever I post a video. But also, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for three to five videos per week. All right, so today I'm talking about how omega-3 directly affects protein synthesis. Omega-3s, as you well know, are healthy for the body. They're great for the brain, they're great for inflammation, Ecosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid are two of the most profound things that can be in our bodies when it comes down to modulating inflammation. But a lot of the studies that have been done on omega-3s have really only been focusing on inflammation up until recently. You see, a lot of these preliminary studies that are starting to look at more muscle-wasting things are finding really positive results. They're finding that just the addition of omega-3s alone can help spare muscle tissue when it comes down to muscle wasting diseases. So what this has done is it's prompted researchers to start taking a deeper dive. They're saying, wait a minute, if just omega-3s alone can help keep muscle from wasting, then what can omega-3s plus the proper nutritional protocols do for someone that's actually trying to build muscle or get in better shape or get more muscle density? So a lot of the more recent studies have started to look at omega-3s in conjunction with hyperinsulinemia and also hyperaminoacidemia. What that means is higher amounts of carbohydrates in conjunction with omega-3s and higher amounts of amino acids with omega-3s. Because we all know that in order to build muscle, we do need to have higher amounts of amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. We can't just expect omega-3s to magically build muscle, but we can expect them to activate certain pathways that allow the protein and the carbohydrates to build muscle a lot better. And this is done through what's called the mTOR pathway. Now mTOR is something pretty unique, and I'm not gonna go into exquisite detail on mTOR in this video, but basically all it does is it activates the anabolic pathway for a muscle cell. Don't be freaked out by the word anabolic. All that means is that the muscle cell is in a position to grow and in a position to become adapted to more actual strength conditioning and things like that. So mTOR is good. And when we find out that omega-3 activates mTOR a lot better, that means it activates the ability to actually build muscle better. But in order to truly back this up with some science, I wanna link out to a study that I thought was extremely interesting. Now mind you, it's a pretty small study, but it's still so profound that I think it's worth mentioning. So it's done at the University of Washington in St. Louis. And what this study looked at was nine participants. These nine participants were relatively sedentary males. And what they did is they gave them four grams of EPA and DHA daily for eight weeks. And they wanted to do some muscle biopsies and a couple other tests to see what happened to their muscle density and their actual protein synthesis. Well, it came as no surprise that at the end of the eight weeks, when you had omega-3s in the equation without hyperaminoacidemia, there wasn't a whole lot of change. There was no change in muscle. But when they implemented omega-3s in conjunction with hyperaminoacidemia, adding protein into the mix, there was a huge increase in protein synthesis. And when I say huge increase, I mean a 50% increase in the pathways that trigger protein synthesis. So we're talking a huge, dramatic improvement in how the body utilizes protein properly to build muscle. So it really truly is not as simple as just eating your proteins, your carbs, and all of that. It comes down to making sure that you have the amino acids that activate the right pathways, and studies are legitimately showing that. So add omega-3s in along with your proteins whenever you can. Now let's talk about another thing that directly has to do with muscle recovery as well, and that's literally recovery itself. You see, we know that omega-3s reduce inflammation in the body, which we know can help recovery. There was actually a study that was published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine in 2009 that took a look at delayed onset muscle soreness and the utilization of omega-3s. Now this study took three groups, okay? They took a control group, they took a placebo group, and then they took the actual experimental group in which they gave them 1.8 grams of omega-3s daily. And what they did is they suscepted these participants to a certain kind of exercise. They put them on a leg extension machine. A leg extension machine is where you sit down and you extend your legs up and let them come down. Well, if you focus on the eccentric contraction on a leg extension machine, you can get yourself pretty sore. So what they did is they had these participants go on a really slow negative contraction to try to instill some soreness in the muscle. And then of course, they documented how sore they were and how fast they recovered. Well, it came as no surprise that the control in the placebo group reported a moderate amount of pain after 24 hours but those that consumed the EPA and the DHA, the omega-3s, had a significant reduction in perceived pain 
and had significant improvement in recovery over those that did not take the omega-3s. So in short, the idea with this video is to put it out there to the world that it's not as simple as what the supplement companies are saying. It's not as simple as what the fitness industry is saying. You don't just consume whey protein and consume carbohydrates. You need to have a nice, well-balanced body, and you need to make sure you're getting in your adequate fats and you're taking care of inflammation so that mTOR can be activated and so that the delayed onset muscle soreness doesn't keep you out of the gym and keep you out from exercising. All right, so as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and make sure that you comment any future video ideas that you have that we can keep on it. I'll see you soon.